Hey everyone, this is Eric. And today in this skill builder, I want to share with you some of my tips and tricks for working with really large models. So I just used the term working with really large models, and I guess that doesn't really explain what I'm trying to do. I think what I would like to convey is to share my process for organizing and an approach to modeling with extremely large models. And when we say large, we actually, I should probably define it. There's two ways to make a model really big. One of them is to have an object that's really highly detailed, like a tree or a building or something that has lots of polygons in it. Uh, the second thing is to have lots of objects. So in this case, if I had even a low poly tree or a low poly um, furnishing, like a bench or something, and I copied it a thousand times or 10,000 times, all of a sudden we've got a lot of information, even just those component instances. So some of the strategies I have that I'm going to share with you are have helped me keep things moving quickly and efficiently as I continue to add more and more detail to my large master planning models. So with that said, let's get to it. So this is the model that I worked, I worked on a long time ago. Um, it was for a master planning competition. You can see if I rotate around the model just a little bit here, it actually is rendering some of the building geometry and lots of existing trees. So it's not super big. The file size, I was able to keep it down to about 113 megabytes, and it's got just under 10 million polygons. So some of you might think, OK, that's not a very big model. But to others of you, yeah, that's a decent size. I think this is when you're going to start to see some of those performance issues that I was talking about. Now, the first thing I've got here in my model is I've got everything turned on. So what I'm going to do is switch over here to what I call a working scene that I've set up, where I basically turn off all the information and the reason why I want to do this is because I want to be able to look at my geometry. So I'm going to come back to that working scene in just a second and why I set that up and how I set that up. But basically, you can see I've got just my ground plane here. And I want to, the first thing I want to do for obviously keeping these large models from getting larger is to make sure you don't have any information that you don't want or you don't need in the model. So I'm going to start by checking to make sure that there's no hidden geometry. If it's hard to see, you can switch to the hidden line style. Sometimes that just makes it easier to see straight edges. To kind of pan around, look around, see, zoom out, make sure that there's no temporary line work that got imported with my CAD that I really don't need. That looks good. I've got a shortcut for toggling that on and off, so I'm going to, I'm going to toggle those hidden edges off. The next thing I want to do is look at, on the same sort of note, is hidden objects. I'm going to turn hidden objects on, and I can see here that in this side of my parcel, there's some remnants of, and I've got a shortcut for that as well, so I'm going to toggle hidden objects on and off. And I've got some trees that, for some reason, I've hidden and I don't need. So I'll turn my tree tag on to, just to show you. These are my trees that I have in my model, and these are the ones that I don't need. So I'm going to go into my group. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those so I don't have those duplicate trees in my model anymore, which is great. So from here, let me turn my textures back on. I'm going to click on my working scene just so you can see the materials again for the site plan. And I'll come back to my tags in just a second. The next thing to do is obviously is to, if you've deleted stuff or if you delete things as you go from your model, like guide points or component instances, periodically make sure to purge it. So I'm going to swing down over to model info and come over here to statistics and then down to purge unused. So like those extra tree components that I just took out, it's actually going to remove those. So even if I delete them, they're still going to be in my model until I've purged them because it sort of retains a copy of it, almost like if it's in its memory or its cache. Might take a second, you know, depending on how much information you've deleted, but it's worth it to do this every now and then. OK, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and close out of there. I don't need that right now. So the next little tip, I mentioned it just a second ago when I was getting started, is that I set up a working scene. And the point of that is, is that if I turn on all my geometry, everything on at once, and you can see I'm 
trying to turn it all back on right now, it's going to take a second. It's a little bit of a lag there uh, because it's got to turn all these buildings, some of which came from Rhino, some came from Revit. So these are pretty kind of heavy buildings. And even if I zoom in, you can see there's just a little bit of a delay as it sort of re-renders everything. So I like to use a working scene where I turn off anything high poly that could be entourage, like furnishings or trees, plant material. And then even if you've got sort of things like handrails or anything that just has that extra bit of information, I just toggle that tag off and save it to a scene. So when I'm navigating my large site, I can say I want to do work over here in this community center portion in the middle of the site. I'm just going to zoom in there. You can see there's absolutely no lag at all. Um, and then when I'm ready, I can either go back to turning everything on or I can actually just turn on, if I'm working on this building, I can actually just turn on the building tag. So that way I'm not turning on trees unless I need to. So I'm only working with sort of the pieces that I need to at any, at any given time. And I'm using the combination of scenes and tags to help me set this up so that I don't have to go and toggle everything on and off every single time. So back to our working scene here, if I toggle that off, I'm going to open up my scenes, sorry, not my scenes, my styles panel, and just talk about how styles themselves actually can help speed up navigating around your model. In this case, I've got, if I switch over to edit and to the face style, I have this as without the textures. So it's just the solid colors. So if I turn the textures back on, that's fine. I like those textures and they look good. But when you have that applying to everything, all it turned on all at once, that again might affect slightly the performance. So in this case, I've actually set my material transparency to faster, and I switched away from textures to just shaded with solid colors. And that again, that style, I created a new style and applied it to my working scene. So now I can switch back and forth between turning everything on, including the face style with textures, to my working which has just the simple color fills. And again, that just adds just a little bit of speed and navigation. So speaking of scenes, I don't know if you noticed, but switching back and forth between these, between my scenes, there's actually no delay here. And that's because I turned off my scene transitions. So if you come up here to back to model info where we were just a second ago, and then back up to the very top, by default, SketchUp enables scene transitions. So if I click on Enable Scene Transitions, the way that you would see if you started a new model at two seconds, and then I pop out of there, and then I click over here to my view, it's going to turn everything on, and it's also going to take a second to get there. So let me go ahead and show you that one more time. If I was, say, looking for a view, and I want to see if I can get a view of that building and say, maybe I like that one. No, I don't like that one. Let's go back to the one I had before. I'm going to click on that. That's not a huge delay, but it is two seconds. So every time you switch scenes, if I go from here to maybe back to here, back again, all of a sudden I'm adding two seconds every single time I want to click my scene. So for me, I've actually, by default, I've saved it to my own template to not enable scene transitions. That way, every time I work on a new file, it's just off. So that's it. I've got a, a working style setup. I've got a working scene setup. I've turned off my scene transitions. So when I bounce around and click on my different, my various uh, tabs, so to speak, I bounce around pretty quickly. And then the last thing I want to do is just say, well, that probably will do a lot of the heavy lifting. But if you find yourself still in a large model like this, where you've got a lot of buildings to turn on and off, simply turning the buildings or the entourage on and off and saving that to a scene might not be enough. For me here, I actually broke the site up. When I built the terrain, I even envisioned not just it being high poly as it gets more and more detail, but I envision multiple people being able to work on this. So I pre-planned this process by breaking the site up into three pieces. So you can see if I click on it, there is going to be a everything here in the middle. Even though the buildings are all grouped together, if you go into that group, 
you can see all the ones in the center of the core of the site are actually grouped individually, and those are assigned specific tags. So I can actually turn off the buildings, say, on all sides of the site, and I can turn the trees off, and I can even turn the blocks off. So if I wanted to, I could work on just the center portion of the site. Maybe I want my, maybe I do need my trees on. So the cool thing about that is that is that I can work on just maybe this portion, and I can still have all my shaded textures on, and I can have my buildings on, uh, and I don't really actually have any lag at all because I'm really just working on a portion of the site. And I actually saved that to a scene. So if I wanted to switch over to the east part of the site, there it is. I can work on that, or I can save it and let somebody else work on it. Back to the central part of the site, there it is as well. Or if I want to keep going west, I'm going the opposite direction because I'm looking the opposite way. But if I go west, I can now work on the west side of the site with very little to or no lag at all. So no affecting the performance. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, I'm going to turn everything back on just so you can see this, including my furnishings and my people and my terrain and my textures. I'm going to turn everything back on. And of course, the last thing I want to say is you'll notice that this whole time I have not turned shadows on. So the only time I would use shadows at all is when I'm ready to export my final scene. So I actually don't save the scene with the shadows. So if I go here to say my view five, you'll notice when I click on this scene, by default, the shadows are turned off. They're not saved to the scene settings. So when I want to save the export on that, I go ahead and click this. See, you can see it's taking a second just to calculate all the shadows, even for this one scene. I would export this scene, or I'd grab a screenshot, something even faster than exporting. And then when I'm done, obviously, the shadows go off. And next time I come to the scene again, you'll notice there's no delay. Shadows are turned off. So let me switch back here. And that's it. I covered a lot in a short amount of time. I wish I could go a little bit longer, but the point is, is this to be a quick tip? But if you keep in mind all of those things, purging your model, uh, making sure there's no extra geometry or no hidden objects that are might be adding um, some weight or file size to your model, uh, thinking about setting up working styles, turning off things you don't need, set a, saving those settings to a working scene, and then, of course, lastly, depending on the size of your site and how you like to work, breaking the model up into smaller pieces and assigning those pieces to tags and to scenes. Now, it's a little bit extra work, of course, to pre-think and pre-set all of those things up. But when I'm especially crunched on a deadline and it's getting close to the end and you're going fast and hitting it hard, those little time savings you do in the beginning of the process, they add up to me, I think, exponentially. So I'm going to leave you at that. I'm going to sign off as always by saying thank you for watching. Hope you found something useful in this video. And whether you did or didn't, or have maybe uh, something I didn't cover or a different way to do it, let us know in the comments. We read the comments and respond, and we look forward to keeping the conversation going there. So thanks as always, and see you next time.